Hello, I'm Atuba Judge, and I'm so glad to be bringing you God's truth today. Now, this is a new week. Praise God. Are you ready to call forth your daily bread? Now, I love the kind of testimonies we have been receiving. God's provision has just been so awesome. Praise God. So listen, it tells me that we are doing something right. Praise God. So are you ready now? Let's go. Say with me, say, Father, today I make demands and I receive my daily bread in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Whenever we declare this word, have great expectations. Why? Because the Lord hears and then so he commanded us to make this demand on a daily basis. Praise God. Let's pray. Father, we give you praise and we give you thanks. It is your truth we seek. For man shall live by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. So you said, Lord. So today we open our hearts to receive words from your mouth. And let it give us life. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray right now that every body is being lifted from everyone watching and listening right now. Every yoke is destroyed. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Amen. Praise God. Now, we're in the month of September. And there's something the Lord have laid in my heart. And that's what I want to share with us beginning from this week and let's see how the Lord will help us and incidentally it's like a follow-up to what we've been talking about praise God and then turn your Bibles with me to Jude Jude now Jude is just one chapter of the Bible you know so it says Jude chapter 1 or Jude verse 3 verse 3 says beloved when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. Now he says we should earnestly, earnestly means seriously, seriously contend contend is like saying fight now not go fight someone but we see push push for something see that's what contention is push for this thing earnestly push push for what the faith that was once delivered to the saints not the faith that was delivered to people the, the faith that was once delivered to the saints. Now, he is giving you the boundaries to which you should um, earnestly contend for. And then he says, it is the particular faith that was once delivered to the saints. And he is referring to the gospel that Jesus brought. Now, number one, the gospel is a gospel of faith. If you don't know what faith is, you can't even understand how to believe or how to walk the gospel. See, the Bible says we should walk out our salvation with fear and trembling. Now, how do you walk that out without understanding, first of all, the faith that was delivered to the saints? Now, there's a reason he said we should contend for that faith. Why? The next verse explains it. It says, For there are certain men crept in unawares who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our Lord 
turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. So there are certain people who has who have come in. He says they have crept in into what into our midst. They have crept into our midst. And guess what? He says now he, these are not outsiders. These are not. Um, the people who you, you these are people you associate with church but it's amazing that he's saying that these same people who crept in and he says they were before they were ordained to this condemnation and then he says they are ungodly men ungodly men but they are preachers and then he says they are turning the grace of our god into lasciviousness then he says they are even denying. How do you deny? You see, the Bible says the fool, if the, a fool have said in his heart that there is no God. So sometimes when you read say, even deny, say, if someone is denying the Lord God, how come the person is a preacher? How come the person is saying he's a Christian when he's denying the Lord God? That's the funny thing about it. Like, no, no one will stand out boldly to tell you that there is no God. You hardly find such people. But then the scriptures tells us that a fool have said it in his heart that there is no God. Now, you may not hear that person author those sentences, you know, that one sentence saying there is no God. You may not hear them say that. But you see, that's why the Bible says he has said in his heart. You say with your heart and you speak with your mouth. So someone can say something and you don't hear them. But you hear them by their attitude. You hear them by their actions. But you may never hear them utter that phrase that there is no God. So now here he says, denying the only Lord God. Now to deny is one thing. To confess is another thing. Now to deny, to say what you're denying is a different ball game altogether. So one can deny something and never say it. See? But the same thing, his attitude and his actions will show that he is denying that thing. So sometimes we wait for people to make statements. It's not about the statement. It's, it's, it's about their actions, their attitude. Their attitude will show a lot. Sometimes people say one thing and they do another thing. And what you do is actually more important than what you say or what you speak. Because this is the truth. You will do what you say. You may not do what you speak, but you will do what you say. Now that's because you can be saying something different from what you are speaking. There are people who say, or there are people who speak, I love you, but they say something different. But you see, their attitude will always show that what they spoke to you about is different from what they are saying in their hearts. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So now there, he says, these people who have crept in unawares, they are denying the Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. How do you deny the Lord God? When you don't take hold of his truth. When you don't consider the truth of what God has said. It means you are denying him. You either confess with the Lord what he has said, or you deny what he has said. And you deny it by saying a different thing other than what God is saying. You know, when you read verse 5, for example, he says, now, now he just told you that because of these men, I want you to earnestly contend for that particular faith that was once delivered. And then he says, because these people have come in. And don't take it for granted because, look at verse 5, he says, I will therefore put you in remembrance, though ye once knew this, how that the Lord having saved the people out of the land of Egypt, afterward destroyed them that believe not. Did you see that? They all came out of, from Egypt rejoicing. But at some point, God destroyed some of them. Why? Because they didn't believe. And then I want to ask them, if they didn't believe, how come they, 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 they followed Moses and they came out of Egypt? There are people like that. If he doesn't believe, why is he still going to church? If he doesn't believe, why is he still a preacher? 
There are preachers that don't believe the gospel. I'm telling you the truth. They don't believe the gospel. Now, because they don't believe the gospel, they begin to yield their minds to all manner of ideas. All manner of ideas. And that has affected the church a great deal and many don't know it. There are teachings today that take out, take you from faith. Take you away from faith. There are teachings today that you, you want to find the grace of our Lord in, in, in that teaching. You can find it. There are teachings that exalt the mind. See? They, oh, you, you've got to hear me. We have a mind. Yes. But our job is to yield our minds to the Spirit. Now, when a teaching or a message or an inspiration begin to exalt your mind against the Spirit of God, then you're going somewhere to happen negatively. Now, so you must be mindful of the things you hear. You must be mindful of the things you expose yourself to. Sometimes what people call wise may not be wise after all. It may be foolish. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, 4 verse 19. 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 19. Okay, let me start from verse 18. It says, let no man deceive himself. If any man among you seem to be wise in this world, let him become a fool that he may be wise. Did you see that? He said, don't let anybody deceive you. If any man among you seemeth to be wise, wise where? In this world. What's he saying? Any man who's wise in the things of this world. There are people like that. You know, you call it street smart. You call it um, uh, whatever you want to call it. You're just saying, look, when it comes to things of this world, they are so smart. They are so wise. He said, those kind of people. See, when it comes to the gospel, he says, let that one become a fool so that he will be wise. Uh huh? How do you become a fool so that you'll be wise? He is saying, drop your wisdom, submit to the Lord, and begin to learn his ways. It is his ways that will now really make you wise. So street wiseness is not wisdom. Watch. For the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. Did you see that? Yeah, I mean, look, look, man, nobody can, nobody can cheat me. Or nobody can, nobody can outsmart me. See, yeah. he said, listen, the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he taketh the wise in their own craftiness. When you think you're too wise before God, he says, God takes you in your own craftiness. You're trying to be smart, smart and then you outsmart yourself even with God. That's what God said. He will, he will outsmart you. He will take you in your craftiness. That thing that you thought will make you well because you're too smart, it will become your downfall. Now, listen. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Again, verse 20. And again, the Lord knoweth the thought of the wise, that they are vain. Did you see that? See? Now, when he's saying all these things, we'll go back to Jude now. And he says that earnestly contend for the faith that was once delivered to the saints. What's he saying? All this smartness that have come in. He says, hear me. Go back to that faith that was delivered to the saints. What is the faith that was delivered to the saints? Now, I've been saying this lately. And that's, what is the gospel? that Jesus handed down to us. Very simple gospel. And what is that gospel? For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life or eternal life. Now, that is the faith that was delivered to the saints. There is no other teaching or faith that is greater than what I have just told you. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have 
eternal life. Now we're going to begin to examine this as we go on this week. And I trust the Spirit of God to help you that you will get to that place also where you will begin to contend for that faith that was delivered to the saints. God bless you. I love you so much. Have a beautiful day full of testimonies. Bye-bye.